Hi, I'm Ben Gore. I'm an artist based in Folkestone and I run the independent arts publisher Blue Monday Press. I start my work in a few different ways. First off, I run an independent arts publisher called Blue Monday Press. Um, through them I publish a variety of different art-inspired books. So I did one about bootleg toys and the scene called The Bootleg Bible. I did one recently called Doom's Bistro, which is a cookbook inspired by MF Doom. Basically like reverse engineering all the foods he's mentioned in his raps and then figuring out a recipe so you can recreate all the foods shouted out. Other than that, I make bootleg toys myself, buy old repurpose action figures, sand them down, then sculpt on top with epoxy putty, and then package it all. Uh, in addition to the toys and the books, I do a mixture of painting and sculpture, all relatively inspired by pop culture and uh, playing around with like different characters. So my brother's a musician, uh, loves making music, has taught himself a few instruments as well as learning how to play the guitar. He's in a band called Bread Forever, they're great. Uh, I actually helped design their recent EP cover. My mum was who kind of really introduced me to the arts, so she really loved art history. She takes all the galleries, takes to take modern and stuff. And growing up, she was like the family photographer. So as I got older, I kind of learned how to play with a camera and stuff. And that's kind of what lured me in a little bit. And then I've always loved drawing. And that was kind of always encouraged as well by my family from a young age. So none of them make art, besides my brother who makes music. But yeah, always kind of been around creative stuff, I'd say. Uh, I feel like I've always had a compulsion to make things. I just always have really enjoyed picturing something in my head and then figuring out the kind of translation process to get that into a physical form, whether that be like a drawing or now with like the toys and books. That like having the idea and then figuring out how to make it real is probably like the most fun thing about creating. And I quite like breaking down the steps and like figuring out what needs to be done to get to the end point. And with stuff like the toys, I really enjoy the actual act of sculpting, like pushing around the putty with my fingers. And although I don't often share the full process of like how the figure I start with turns into like the finished product, I really enjoy seeing that transformation. All I want to do is come up with ideas and then make them like I'm very compulsive to do that and my brain is constantly whirring with like different ideas and stuff that could be made and there's also that magic of like having an idea something that doesn't even exist in the world yet and then yeah bringing that like grabbing that in your mind and like pulling it into reality essentially and obviously it's always really nice when you do that and then people really appreciate seeing something that you've just like conjured up. Uh, I feel like all my art starts from just stuff I enjoy, whether that be like a book, film, cartoon character, piece of art. It's always kind of a way I start from a point of something I enjoy and then I don't know, you put three things you like in a blender and then see what comes out is kind of how I think about it. Um, and I kind of don't like to distinguish between high and low brow, because to me it's kind of like whatever you see, it's just how it makes you react to it. Like you could watch a film that was made for £20,000 or something and have a much stronger reaction than something that was made for like a few million. And for me, like, the high and low brow, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So for me it's just like, putting everything on the level playing field, with the toys especially, like, everything gets shrunk down to the same form, whether it be like a 20 by 20 painting or like a comic strip. It's all put into the same box. And then if I do a gallery show or anything, they're all put on the same wall as well. So they all, it's kind of democratized. They're all shrunk down to the same level. So there isn't that hierarchy as much. 
Uh, and it's also, with the toys and stuff, it's a way of like, as well as people seeing my art and enjoying what they see and getting the references, I feel like I have quite an eclectic palette, so I'm also hopefully introducing people to either like films, TV shows, or pieces of art they might not have otherwise discovered. Like they might have seen a few bits and want to see the rest of my art, and then by seeing the rest, they introduce like a whole other world they didn't really know existed. And then also with the high and low brow, uh, it's quite fun taking high brow paintings. Like I really love Francis Bacon, so it's fun taking his work and then shrinking it into toy form. Essentially one of like the grand masters of British painting. Like translating his work into like a sea little action figure. I think there was like a magic to that as well. Um, and I just really enjoy the process. Yeah, I quite like where it sits between though, where people think it's the mass reduced thing, but then when they find out it's handmade, it kind of flips it again where they're then kind of confused that you've just made one of something that's usually like made by the thousands or whatever. Yeah, there's a few around the country, uh, well, around the world now they've got little toy shows as well, they say. So. Uh, so I started Blue Monday Press basically as a way to get myself in print. When I was at uni, uh, I got introduced to like zine culture and just really fell in love with artists using like books as a way to uh, make and distribute their work cheaply, easily, and in like short, short runs essentially. Even now I've not had a lot of success getting my books or getting any of my art in print uh, outside of my own books. So for me it was a way of like taking control of that process. So. I can come up with an idea, I don't have to ask anyone's permission. So yeah, I can have an idea, come up with a book and publish it, and market it all myself in-house. I can do books and projects, like I did this book called Evergreen Fantasies, which was uh, a collection of art from around the world by artists who all used the characters from The Simpsons. So it's kind of looking at how all these different artists from around the world took these characters and in their own mediums, whether it be like needle craft, 3D design, bootleg toys, paintings, comics, how they'd all kind of like taken in the same thing and then digested it and like made something special, yeah, inspired by those characters. Uh, I've got a few plans for 2024. I'm still kind of in the process of figuring out what's the end goal by the end of the year. But, I mean, always more art, so there'll be more bootleg toys, more drawings, more paintings. Grander project-wise, I'm at the moment I'm trying to figure out how to get more fiction into my work, which might end up being like a multimedia book with some short stories uh, and artwork, which should hopefully be illustrated as well. More paintings especially, actually, you can see behind whoop, behind me. So every time I get a new skateboard, I will paint the old one. I just got a new skateboard, so that's something that I'm gonna keep doing. Every, it'd be every like three months or so, I wanna have a new skateboard, which will go into a series, which so far has all been uh, very Mr. Blobby heavy. So I wanna continue that theme, definitely. He's just a creature of nightmares, and I like making art about him, really. <laughs> yeah, other than that, it's all quite vague, but yeah, there's just gonna be more fun, silly things, I hope. If you want to be an artist, I would say the best thing to do is just make things. Uh, you only really get better by practice. So if you want to be an artist, make things. But I'd say the key thing is write down your ideas, keep a long list, set a schedule. It doesn't have to be strict, but for example, if you want to make a drawing a month or a drawing a week, stick make that I make that plan and stick to it. And then if you write a list of your ideas, um, give them kind of time to settle, and then pick like your top three favourite, and then whittle down that to your favourite, and then go for that one. And the best way to know which ideas you like us is the stuff that like you personally are excited to see or that you want to hang on your wall. 
So when I'm making stuff, I'm always like making it for myself first and then kind of hoping other people who see it will have the same reaction that I did when I came up with the idea. Because it's quite hard once you start making something and you've seen the whole process and you've been kind of in the thick of it to then like have that distance of what the finished item actually is. So if you start from the point of like you're excited to see it be made and you'll be proud to put it on your wall once it's made, that's the key I think. Thank you.